Hi everyone, this is Leslie and I am coming to you live from um, our home office here in Mission Viejo and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Love Where You Live, Give Where You Love. Um, again, thanks for watching. As you're watching, please feel free to, as always, ask any questions um, that you might have as well as uh, definitely give us one of those thumbs up or hearts if you like anything that we discuss and if while I'm discussing anything you have um, like I said any questions or any comments please feel free to share we'd absolutely love to hear so having said all that um, of course want to always remind you of our motto love where you live give where you love hi Mike um, just as a reminder, we will donate $500 to the school of your choice for any property that we help you buy or sell um, because we feel that it's really important to give back to the community and obviously make it even more of a place that you love. So um, always keep that in mind. Hi, Alexis. I uh, also wanted to just touch uh, upon something, too, that is also very important to us. There are a lot of um, values that we have here at the SWAN team um, and one of them was actually um, it was a great reminder big shout out to uh, apprentice Lauren's fourth grade teacher Karen Kuo at Castile um, she brought up integrity and uh, that's actually a word that the kids are learning more about this week and I find that um, it is something now more than ever in our lives and in business that it's important uh, that we focus on. And I love that she is teaching uh, the kids in her class about that. And just as a reminder, what she's teaching them is that integrity is choosing courage over comfort, choosing what is right over what is fun, fast, or easy, and choosing to practice um, values rather than just profess them. So again, Big shout out, thank you to Mrs. Kuo for teaching our fourth graders that. Um, you know, it's uh, an important value that we here at the SWAN team, uh, it's something that we value and that we wanna convey to everyone that we work with that, um, again, working with the SWAN team, you know you're gonna be working with someone who has integrity and is gonna do the right thing and do right by you. And um, it's very important to us. So we wanna make sure that you know that. So having said all of that, I see already that I have some highs. So hi, um, Annalisa and Alexis and mom and dad. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, today we're gonna to be talking about preparing to buy a home and as much as I would love to tell you, it's just as easy as going and buying a pair of shoes at a department store. It's not. And uh, preparing is crucial to being able to purchase a home and purchasing the home that you want and hopefully getting the first home that you want. Right now, I know in many of my videos in the past, I've discussed how it's a seller's market. And boy, is it ever. Um, I was sharing with you in previous market updates that especially in the uh, million dollar and below range that we're seeing great competition and a lot of um, uh, multiple offers and you know within the first few days homes going into escrow um, I have firsthand experience actually of a home in the 1.5 million dollar range actually having uh, multiple offers and uh, really great terms. And we're gonna get into that a little more as I go over this uh, and preparing to buy a home. So having said that, it's your first time buying a home. What do you do? What do you need to know? The first thing that you wanna do is check your credit score. Um, this is going to determine a lot. If you have to get a loan for your home, which 99% of us, need to um, your what you're going to qualify for a loan is going to be highly dependent upon your credit score that is going to determine the interest rate that you're given so you want to make sure that um, your credit score is the best it can possibly be you can obtain a free credit score from annualcreditreport.com and that will give you an idea of where 
your credit is. And also, I forgot to mention this, all of these points that I will be sharing with you are going to be on the website, on the blog. So you can go to www.theswanteamoc.com to check out any of these points that I'm talking about and have a reference point. So no need to take any notes um, for what I'm saying. You can just reference it all there. Um, so again, you wanna make sure that you get a credit report and you see exactly what standing you are with your credit score and your credit report. There might be a mistake uh, that somehow got on your credit score and as a result, it's reducing your score. That's not good. You wanna make sure then that you have time to go correct it and um, then that way your credit score can go up. And again, you could potentially qualify for more for a loan and also a lower interest rate. Um, also, there may be some oops mistakes that you've made in your past that haven't cleared your credit score yet. And sometimes those things just take time, months, maybe even years. So again, you have to kind of evaluate those things and it's always best to know what you're dealing with and what you're working with before you actually go online and look and think you know what you qualify and qualify for and what house you want to get because unfortunately sometimes the house you want to buy isn't exactly what you qualify for. So um, again, go check your credit score. And a quick hi to Jenny and Alec. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, so once you have figured out your credit score, then you want to figure out how much you can actually afford and how much you want to spend. Sometimes this can be different. When you go to a bank and you say, you know, pull my credit score, tell me how much I qualify for, it may be well over what you actually want to spend. And that's a good situation to be in. Um, but again, those are all the things that you wanna think about because when the heat is on and you've got 12 hours to decide whether or not you wanna put an offer in on the home, all of these things have to be decided and you wanna make sure that you're ready to strike when the iron's hot and uh, you know, make that great offer when the right property comes up. So again, um, you need to decide on how much money you can and are willing to put down on the purchase, which will again determine how much you're mortgaging and, um, and potentially what the interest rates are. Uh, you'll need to identify documents that verify your funds. Oftentimes this is savings and bank account statements. You'll need to provide those to a lender. And um, what you want to make sure that you don't do too is make a lot of changes to those accounts because that kind of puts up a red flag. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to contact two to three mortgage lenders. I've got um, several if you ever need any mortgage lenders that are highly dependable um, and great to work with. But Similar to, as I was mentioning in my video about selling your home and interviewing a realtor, you want to interview your mortgage lender too, um, just to make sure that you feel comfortable with that lender. And also, some lenders have different programs and different packages, and it could be the difference in your monthly payment. It could be the difference in your interest rate. It could be the difference in um, you know how much you have to put down. So. It's just information and ultimately then you can choose what's best and uh, most feasible for your lifestyle. So after you've done that and you've just uh, talked to two or three lenders and gotten your information, which by the way too, um, some people worry, oh well, you know, three lenders are pulling my credit, is that going to impact my credit? No, it's not. So again, if you're kind of doing it within a uh, a short amount of period within 30 days, then it doesn't flip your credit score. So, um, and they pull kind of a preliminary credit score. So you're okay. Um, once you've determined which rate, which mortgage lender that you'd prefer to work with, then you ask for a pre-approval letter from that mortgage lender. And most lenders um, that I know can turn these letters around very quickly within probably six to 12 hours, some even sooner than that. Then once you get that pre-approval letter, you have to do nothing. And <laughs> uh, when I say that, I mean you have to avoid making major changes in your life um, because that will greatly impact your ability to secure a loan. So, for example, you don't want to switch jobs because they are um, lenders are looking for the stability. 
Um, you also don't want to buy a new car. They don't want to see you taking out a whole new loan, not to mention then that would potentially impact what you have stated to them as potential um, income uh, to make your mortgage payment. Hi, Yvonne. Thanks for joining. Um, you also don't want to apply for a new credit card and you don't want to make large purchases. I know you're excited about getting a new home, but it's not the time to buy, you know, a whole new living room set or a dining room set or anything like that. You want to make sure that, um, that you avoid those large purchases so that your credit stays nice and calm and your assets stay nice and level exactly where they were when you received your pre-approval. So now that you have um, kept calm, you've gotten your pre-approval, you're all good, then you need to um, make a home wish list and divide it into three categories. Um, as far as the things that you're looking for in your home. So there is first the non-negotiables. Second, there are the um, nice to have items and then your dream features. So the non-negotiables would be, okay, we need at least three bedrooms. We have five kids and we need at least three bedrooms. So again, a non-negotiable kind of situation. Um, or if you wanna be in a particular city or within certain school district parameters, again, a non-negotiable. Um, the nice to have items. Well, I'd really love to have a home office or I, a bonus room would be really great, but if for some reason you're uh, unable to find that, it's not, it's not a deal breaker. And then, of course, your dream features. Do you want a pool? Do you want to have fruit trees in the house that you purchase? Do you want to ideally have a single story ranch home? Or, you know, would you be okay with a second story? All those types of dream features, a waterfall, you name it, a built in entertainment center, all those types of things that you could potentially build on your own. Um, but it would be nice, or I'm sorry, it would be a dream to have those. Now, again, you've developed this list of all these wonderful things that you're looking for in your new home. Then you need to find a realtor that you can trust. Now, of course, you know, you can always come to us because we are incredibly trustworthy and um, work very hard for our clients and um, always want to do what's right and do what's best for our clients. But of course, as I mentioned in the past, it's still always important to interview at least two realtors so that you find who you're most comfortable with. And, you know, again, I always encourage even someone who meets with me to meet with someone else only because I'm confident enough in my skills and my expertise in real estate that I can help you and I know I can find what you're looking for. But I want to make sure that you talk to someone else so that person can confirm that, yes, I'm the right realtor for you, um, which I guarantee will happen. So, um, so again, you want to interview at least two real estate agents to make sure that you're comfortable working with that person as well as that you trust them. And as I mentioned, when you're selling your home, just like when you're selling your home, once you pick a realtor that you trust, you then wanna trust your realtor. Um, again, let them find the properties that you wanna look at and trust their best judgment as far as potential offer uh, terms, what, you should offer as far as a price. Again, maybe they need extra days to rent back, all those types of things. That is what a realtor is there to help you do, to help navigate and um, on this buying side, help put together the best offer package possible so that you can get the home that you want. Once you've decided um, on a realtor, you can definitely start browsing listings online. There are a ton of different websites. Um, I find that Realtor.com is actually the most accurate um, by the minute as far as when homes, especially when homes are um, active and under contract. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I've been sent homes that somebody tells me and they're from a different site that someone says, oh, I want to see this house. And on the website they were looking, it showed as active, but then when I pull it up, um, in MLS, it's actually under contract and no longer has any showings. And it's a big bummer and clients are disappointed. So again, realtor.com is a great place to go so that you can um, 
get the most current and up-to-date information. Another great thing that you can do is determine the location. As we all know, the old adage, location, location, location. You wanna make sure that if you can hone in to a specific community or area within a city that you really think your family will fit well, um, a great way to do that is to actually visit it often and kind of drive around, see if uh, you gel with the vibe of the community in the neighborhood. And again, even ask around and find out what people think of that community. Uh, you know, Facebook is a perfect place to look on the different community website or community pages that, you know, and ask questions about references to, you know, do you have good Italian restaurants? Do you, you know, are there people playing at the park all the time? All the things that might be important to you. Um, it's again, important uh, to do that research because obviously once you buy the home, you don't wanna move anytime soon. So you wanna make sure that you're making the right decision. Now, having said that, you have found your realtor, you've looked online at listings, you have now hopefully gone and seen listings in person, and you've found the house. Yippee! Um, and it's offer time. It's very exciting. Uh, but again, now you're going to have to pull together all of the information that I have told, uh, I have mentioned previously. You're going to have to pull together that pre-approval letter. You're going to have to have documents of your proof of funds. Again, bank statements, um, savings statements, you know, if you're pulling from your 401k, anything like that, you need those documents. Um, of course, your realtor will help you put together a purchase agreement. And one thing that I always recommend, because I don't think it could ever hurt you, is a personal letter to the seller um, that includes a photo of you and your spouse or you and your pet, if you have one, or you and your family. Um, and again, including pertinent information about you and your family, where you current li currently live, members of your family, and then also to include what you like about the seller's house. Um, I think it's always nice for a seller to hear that someone else appreciates probably the same things that they appreciate in their own home. And as you can see, good old Lucy is in the background. I gave her a bone for a little bit, but <laughs> um, only lasts so long. So, um, and then she hears someone at the door, so yay. Um, so if you're a dog person and you want to include your picture of your dog in your letter, you can definitely do that. Um, and then at that point, you uh, have put all your package together. Again, as I mentioned, trying to make as uh, competitive as possible your terms. Um, again, asking those things, you know, do I need to offer a, rent, a free rent back to the sellers? Uh, do I need to have a short escrow? I will tell you that sellers typically always want a short escrow. Why? Because that means they get their money faster. So, <laughs> so you know, the idea of stretching an escrow out longer, it, you know, a lot of things can happen, a lot of things can fall apart, and so the shorter the escrow, the better. Um, in some cases, uh, clients are having to even waive appraisals because, you know, that just gives the seller that much more uh, confidence that you are going to move forward with the sale and that if for some reason the house doesn't appraise for the value that you have decided to purchase it at that you're going to come in and um, pay the difference although that is something actually that gets negotiated so hi phil um thanks for joining so um, again, all of those terms, listen to your realtor, listen to your realtor, listen to your realtor, and hopefully that realtor is me. Um, but again, that is um, in a nutshell, preparing to buy a home, and then hopefully your offer gets accepted. And we'll move into the next uh, Facebook Live video that we have, which is on, oh my gosh, you're in escrow, now what? So um, I'm looking and I don't see um, a ton of questions, but I appreciate that you guys like the personal letter and that you thought some of these ideas were good ones. So if you have any further questions, feel free to call or text anytime at 949-444-1601 or type me an email at leslie at the swan team of course as i mentioned before you can always go to our website 
theswantimoc.com and click on the blog and all of these ideas um, and all of these steps to prepare to buy a home are listed on our website. And um, again, as always, remember to love where you live, give where you love. And again, uh, we still are offering the free termite inspection. So I know a lot of people have taken advantage of that and are finding uh, you know, it's not always fun to have a termite inspection, but they're glad that they can get it done and getting it for free. So if anyone is interested, again, uh, feel free to contact us and we will get that set up for you. But if there aren't any questions, then again, I will just say enjoy your day, love where you live, give where you love, and everyone take care. See you next week at four o'clock. Bye.